Welcome to the Spy Collection Digital Edition, where we are looking at artifacts that only exist in digital format. This is Anastasios and today's artifact comes from Edward Snowden's archive, and more precisely, a slide deck released to the public by Ryan Gallagher of The Intercept in September 2015. Please note that the name of the file was 200G Iris Access. Iris was the code name of that internet surveillance program. Now the slide deck was likely from 2009 to 2010 and it was a brief presentation of the Special Source Access Unit of Britain's GCHQ. Sometimes this unit is also called SSC, Special Source Exploitation, and GCHQ is the main signals intelligence agency of the United Kingdom. To make it easier to go through it, we reconstructed the slide deck to add some transitions and here is that version. I know that some people might ask this, so let me answer that proactively. Unlike the United States classification, this one has another qualifier. It says strap1 next to the well-known top secret keyword. Strap is the equivalent of the US government's SCI, the sensitive compartmented information. This is what usually people mean when they say above top secret. Basically, even if someone in the UK held a top secret clearance to see material classified with strap, they need to go through a procedural verification to have more fine-grained access control on that kind of information. There were three levels with strap 1 being the lowest and 3 being the highest. Ok, so what was special source access in the GCHQ? Using the same name as their US counterparts, the NSA. By special source access, they meant collection of data from major fiber optic cables and telecommunication providers domestically and abroad, most of the time by making secret agreements with those telecommunication operators. This is why the title of the presentation was Supporting Internet Operations. In other words, how the special source access was helping the GCHQ get more visibility into what's communicated over the internet by tapping into the fiber optic cables that connect the UK and the rest of the world. The black box on the right side was likely the name of the presenter, but it was censored by the intercept to protect the identity of this GCHQ employee. From this slide we can deduce that this was a 15 minute internal briefing on the current state, the plans of the Special Source Access or SSC Special Source Exploitation Team and what they wanted to get access to in the fiscal year of 2010-2011. The next slide is one of the most interesting ones. What you see in this map are the submarine communications cables that connect the United Kingdom with the rest of the world for internet access and other telecommunications. The names are the official names that those cables had, which also usually implies the company that operates them. Worth noting that most of those maps only show an estimation of the location of those cables and not their actual exact location since all governments are interested in tapping them to intercept the traffic or even sabotage them in case of tensions. There were three main challenges for IRIS. First, more bandwidth being lit on existing cable systems. Secondly, that several new cable systems were being introduced just in 2010. And finally, as per SSC roadmap, we need to maintain our investment in the access footprint in order to keep up. This slide also has some speaker notes. The speaker notes say, this is a view of the commercial cable systems transiting the UK. There are around 1600 available 10 gigabits within these cables. This is 25% of all internet traffic. Although the total percentage processed may seem in the lower percent line range, we actually survey the majority of the 1600. This allows us to select the most valuable to switch into our processing systems. Advancing techniques will allow a greater rate of processing by using target techniques, bulk presence events and TIPC. TIPC was a 5 eyes abbreviation for Telecommunications IP Collection and it meant all internet traffic passing through those cables. To summarize, the speaker notes told us that there were around 1600 10 gigabit channels within those tables, which was roughly 25% of the entire internet traffic. They could monitor most of them and push whatever was considered relevant to the GCHQ processing centers. 
Finally, newer methods could improve processing speed. Ok, what was the capability of the SSC in 2010? It says, following the efforts made for the July deliverable and the progress made towards the 100 March 2010 target, GCHQ's current 10 gigabit SSC capability is We can intercept touch around 800 times 10 gigabits and there is a note and the note says does not include circuit way good. Circuit was GCHQ's codename for an internet interception sender based in Sib in Oman and way good another interception sender in an unknown location. We can cyclic survey 188. This needs some more explanation for people not familiar with SIGINT. Technically, what this means is that each of those 10 gigabit bearers was rotated every few minutes looking for traffic of interest. So 188 means that SSC was able to simultaneously monitor 188 10 gigabit bearers searching for whatever GCHQ analysts wanted to intercept and if that wasn't found in the defined time, usually around 15 minutes, it was moving to the next batch of 188 bearers following a cyclic pattern that goes through all of them using this logic. We can egress to GCHQ processing 87, see note number 2. This means that at any given time, SSC was able to forward traffic from up to 87 10 gigabit bearers to the processing centers of GCHQ. The note here says, Hiasco access egress build complete, awaiting extra Arcano egress. Ok, lots of codenames here. Hiasco was a GCHQ codename of a British telecom submarine cable and build is one of the oldest signals intelligence stations of GCHQ. Lastly, Arcano was a codename for the cable and wireless Apollo South submarine internet cable. What it says in plain English is the British Telecom access to forward traffic to the build GCHQ station was completed and waiting for the same to happen for the Apollo South submarine cable of the cable and wireless company. Alright, next we're reading. In addition, we are working with Gerontic to agree an IRU which will enable a significant reduction in annual running costs, around £2 million saving per annum, along with a further 10 times 10 g egress. This paragraph provides insights into how SSC was doing such massive traffic forwarding. Gerontic was the code name for the cable and wireless company, which later was acquired by Vodafone, and IRU stands for indefeasible rights of use and it's a type of contractual agreement for fiber cables. This means that GCHQ was leasing cables from Cable and Wireless, later Vodafone, to connect its processing centers with the tapping points and that new contract agreement could save them a significant amount of money and give them more bandwidth. Here is the roadmap and future capability. The graph on the top right indicates the growth of this surveillance program. Note that in the Five Eyes Intelligence community, those are never referenced as mass surveillance but instead as bulk collection. And it starts with The SSC roadmap is still valid though needs revisiting to update, validate the recommended intercept and tigers expansion. Which is pretty self-explanatory. And next we read Along with TEA and SRT and TCB we are developing new relationships to expand our access footprint to bring the number of 10G bearers. The TEA, SRT and TCB were all GCHQ teams that were used for such telecommunication surveillance programs. Basically, companies were making secret agreements with GCHQ to install tapping equipment into their submarine cables infrastructure, which included other companies' cables without their knowledge. To keep those relationships active, GCHQ had a team for each of those companies and those were called SRTs, Sensitive Relationship Team. The others, TEA and TCB, were for the technical part of the work. To summarize, this bullet point was saying that GCHQ was working with cable operators to recruit them to spy on behalf of GCHQ by tapping on their customers and partners and allow SSC access to that. Here it specifically says that by March 2011, what GCHQ's SSC wanted to intercept was 1,513 or thereabouts 
plus 70 if we include the circuit and Weygood. We already mentioned those two codenames, circuit and Weygood. They were two GCHQ internet interception centers. And the roadmap continues that egress to GCHQ processing systems by March 2011 should be 415. This meant that they wanted to forward 415 interceptions to GCHQ's processing systems by March 2011. And eagle-eyed will have noticed that this doesn't align with a projected processing and storage profile. And here is a visual slide of what SSC was planning for 2010. We already mentioned what Bude Sigin Station was, and the headquarters of GCHQ are in Seltenham. And this slide included a third site marked with investigation. This likely meant that the plan included Bude getting upgraded to have an optical distribution frame ODF with 150 interfaces to intercept communications. Additionally, to receive 12 10 gigabit bearers from British Telecom undersea cable codenamed Hasco, and another 10 from cable and wireless Vodafone Apollo South submarine internet cable codenamed Arcana. On the headquarters side, an 80 interception ODF was planned to be added, more data to be sent from existing surveillance points. Communications from Global Crossing Undersea Cables, codenamed Pinage, were to be added, and four more 10 gigabit lines were to be intercepted and forwarded to the headquarters by two other telecommunications providers, codenamed Plain and Proof. Also, level 3 telecommunications, codenamed Little, was to be added as well. Finally, there is a very interesting case with three more submarine cables of the cable and wireless which was later acquired by Vodafone. Those three were codenamed Grasp, Sostrum and Visage, and it looks like GCHQ was planning to consolidate the agreement they had with this provider under a single program which would give them extensive access. This program was codenamed Kennington, and as we read here, it involved 224 10 gigabit bearers from this provider, and that was to get introduced in 2010. Likely due to its massive size, it was planned to get split between Butte and Sheltenham for processing. Now that all of that is hopefully clear, let's get to the summary of those 2010 plans of GCHQ's SSE. 10 times 10 gigabit from British Telecom, Hiasco, now available at Butte, awaiting debit card commissioning to process. That code word, debit card, was referring to the processing system in Butte. So the intercepted traffic was forwarded to build, but the processing system was still under development. 8 out of 10 additional cable and wireless Vodafone, codenamed Arcano, bearers for build on track for March 2010. Kennington agreement complete to enable increased Sostrum, Grasp and Visage access and egress. So most, if not all, cable and wireless Vodafone traffic was monitored with this agreement. Plain and proof sites available. Egress communications from Proof to Sheltenham will be in place by March 2010, plain to follow. Initial capability plan for March includes TEA, SD and FJB. Those last three acronyms which give an idea of what they want to collect are Key Exchange Authenticated, SIGIN Development and Flexible Survey Knowledge Base. The latter has to do with the cycle survey mentioned earlier. It's a database to enable this capability. OSDS likely means optical system devices and BUD OSDS IOCs interception of communications today had the capability of around 150 and Sheltenham OSDS upgraded in December had a capability of 78. New relationships and access. Peanuts and little progressing but not dates yet. And Assessment of potential regional processing center 2 and 3 or 4 sites is underway. And with that, we finished this very interesting presentation from GCHQ's Special Source Exploitation Team. From the historical perspective, this was a very unique digital artifact since it shows the early phases of internet surveillance by GCHQ, the challenges and how it was implemented. Back then, most people didn't even use encrypted communications, so GCHQ being able to collude with telecommunication providers and obtain access to roughly 25% of the entire internet traffic 
it's reasonable that was considered a top secret intelligence capability. Such access could provide the UK government with intelligence to almost everyone's online activities and communications, without them having the ability to detect this since it was happening in the internet provider layer. Great example that nothing is as it seems.